Hey everyone, I'm Brooke and welcome to my channel. So today we're talking about Apple reminders and some of you may already know this, but I am pretty much a sucker for any sort of task manager, calendar, or general productivity app. For the last few years, my task manager of choice has been an app called TickTick that you may have heard of. And honestly, it was great. I liked it. I even paid for like the premium subscription to the app. But the last year or so, I've just heard that Apple Reminders has gotten so much better than it used to be that it's worth checking out. So since about the end of last year, I've now been testing it out pretty much in parallel with TickTick. I've just been going about my day using both apps for reminders to see which one I prefer. And now I can confirm that Apple Reminders has gotten that much better because I've actually now canceled my TickTick -tick subscription and I am using Apple Reminders as my daily task manager. So today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about Apple Reminders and how you can start using it to really boost your productivity. Hopping into the app itself, this is what it looks like. It says Reminders. It should automatically come downloaded on any of your Apple devices. But if it's not, you can always find it in the App Store. And when you open it, it will look similar to this. Now, I have been actively using the app, as I said, so it might look a little bit different, but the general layout is pretty easy to follow. At the top, you'll see a search bar, which is super handy if you're quickly looking for a reminder. Then you'll see a section of any pinned lists, and I'll show you in a second how to do that or how to change that. But the one I will just quickly call out is the today list. So if you click on that, it's super useful. And this is an update in the last year or so that now you can see any of your reminders today split into morning, afternoon, or tonight if there's a time associated with them. So you can really use this as basically your daily planner, which is a feature that I've been using and really liking. If though you don't like that, you can always turn it off by hitting the three dots in the top right and unchecking the group by time. Then as you scroll down on the left-hand side, you will see any of the lists or reminders you've already created. And at the bottom, you'll see a button to add a list and to add a new reminder. So let's start super simple by just creating a new reminder. So we're gonna go ahead and click new reminder and you're gonna see it's just gonna add the new reminder or the empty reminder to any list that you're currently in and you can just start typing. So let's say call mom. So I've just added the text to the reminder and you can see what's awesome is it adds a little field to add note. So if I wanted to add context, I could say it's her birthday. Now, if you want to add even more to this reminder, you'll see a little eye on the right hand side. And when you click on that, it's going to open a whole bunch of different options for this reminder. So most notably is you can add a date and time for the reminder. So let's say I want to call her tomorrow at, let's say noon. I can make this event repeat if I want it to be an annual event. And as you scroll down, you'll start to see some really powerful options that work so seamlessly with my Apple devices and is honestly one of the biggest reasons I've now converted to Apple Reminders. So the first one is location. And if I were to turn this on, you can set it so that you are reminded of this reminder when you arrive or leave a specific location. So if I know I want to call mom the second I get home from work, I can set it to that and then my phone or my device will automatically remind me when I get home that I need to call mom. Now the next option is when messaging. And this one is really cool also because when I turn this on, I would just choose my mom for this reminder. And then the next time I'm texting with her, I will be reminded of the reminder. It just pops up on your device. So it's a really cool situational reminder feature that I think is really useful if you wanna to remember to tell someone something or ask them something. It's really easy the next time you're talking to them, your phone will just remind you to do it. Then as you scroll down at the bottom, you could flag this reminder, you could set a priority, low, medium, or high. You could change which list it's nested in. And the cool thing is you can also add subtasks. So if you're like party planning or you wanna add some more 
subtasks to a reminder, you have that option. And at the very bottom, you could even add an image if it were relevant. And then once you've hit done, you'll see the reminder at the bottom of your list and you can always swipe to the left to flag it, delete it, or get to the details. You can hold on it to move it up in priority. And if you've created the reminder and realize it's actually a subtask of another reminder, you can just hold it hold it on top of the other one and it'll kind of indent it below as a subtask to that reminder. And at the very top, you'll see some quick actions. So you can quickly just set the time and day. You can also add a location, flag the reminder or add a tag. So that's how you would create a reminder. But now once you have a bunch of reminders, it probably makes sense to organize them. And that's where these lists come into play. So now if you were to hit add list, you can name the list. So let's call this one home. List type, we'll get a little bit more into that in a second, but for now we're just gonna leave it as a standard list. You can pick the color. You can pick any of these preset emojis or you can use your typical emoji keyboard to pick what is going to make the most sense. Now for list type, you'll see three different options. So standard is just a regular list. Groceries, this is one of honestly my favorite features of Apple Reminders. When you create a groceries list, it's going to automatically organize anything you add to that list into sections. So when we go into my grocery list, you're going to see everything I add is automatically added to a section. So meat, produce, oils and dressings, this is all stuff that has been done automatically because I selected it as a grocery list type. So if I were to add milk, for example, and hit enter, it's gonna automatically move up the milk to my dairy, eggs and cheese. So when I'm in the grocery store, it makes it really easy because I can automatically see everything within that area that I need to pick up. The third option is a smart list. And if you watched my video on Apple Notes, this works similarly to the smart folders. So it can just allow you to filter down your reminders even more. Let's say you wanna see all of your high priority reminders in a specific area. You can do so here and then any reminder that you have marked high priority, regardless of which folder or list they're in, will be pulled and filtered into this high priority group so that it's really easy to find and see. And then once you have created any smart lists, they'll still appear on the left hand side, but they'll just be visible with this little gear icon letting you know it's a smart list. And there's a few more really useful things you can do with your standard lists. So if you click into one of your regular lists and you hit the three dots at the top, you can create sections. So similarly to the grocery list that automatically divides your reminders into different sections, you can create your own here. So this could be really useful if you want to split something up by, let's say, family member or class number or even project stage. So once you have a few sections laid out, the other useful thing you can do is view them as a column as opposed to a list. So you would again hit the three dots and hit view columns. And then that way your reminders list is set up like a Trello board or a Kanban board. So this is a really useful view if you're doing something like planning or event or working on a project and you wanna see what stage things are in. The other really useful thing you can do if you hit the three dots in the right is save as template. So if you are working on a lot of projects or have a lot of different classes and you want the same structure for each of those lists, you can hit save template. You can name the template. So let's say for this one, new video, save it. And you'll know it's saved or a template once you see this like little square action going on at the top. And then that way, the next time you go and hit add list to create a new list, you can hit templates and you'll see any of the templates that you have saved and it'll just save you so much more time. You don't have to customize every list every single time. So now let's talk about organization because once you have a lot of reminders and a lot of lists, it can get a little bit overwhelming. The first thing you can do when you have related lists is create a group or a folder. So how you would do that is you would hold one list and 
place it on top of another related one to create a group and you can then name your group. And you can always swipe to the left to delete a list or even delete a group. And remember this section of pinned lists at the top? Well, this is how you do that. So if there is a list you want to pin, you can hold on the list and you can see the pin option to move it up to the top. Then if you want to remove a list from the top, you can always hold it and do unpin. Or if you click the three dots on the top right of the panel, you can edit all of your lists. So you can basically pick and choose which one you actually want pinned at the top, hit done, and then it will update your pinned list. Now, there are a few settings and widgets that are worth going over. So when you go into settings and scroll down, you will see a reminders section. And things I'll point out here, first is default list. So if ever you are just quickly adding a reminder, or maybe you're using Siri to add a reminder, it's automatically going to place it in whatever is set as your default list. So I recommend taking a look at this setting and making sure it is set up the way you want. Next thing is all day reminders. So if you don't set a time for a reminder, but you do set a date, you can choose what time of day you will be reminded automatically. And maybe the most useful one that is a relatively new feature for Apple Reminders, it took way too long to get this, is to include Do Today as a badge on the Reminders app. I recommend turning this on and then that way any reminders you have today will show up as a badge count on the app itself. Now you can also use interactive widgets with the Reminders app, which is very long overdue and something I use every day. So for the reminders widgets, there's three different size options of widgets and you can always choose which list you want to be shown on the widget. So you could even have multiple widgets showing different lists. You would just click edit and then select which list. And so now without even having to open the app, when I'm done the reminder, I can just click it off from the widget itself. Now, another great thing that is super underutilized is the app integrations with Apple Reminders. And so what I mean by that is you could have Apple Notes and Apple Reminders or your email and Apple Reminders work together. So for example, Apple Notes is an app I use all the time and it does not have a built-in reminders or like due date feature. So what you can do instead when you're in a note that you want to be reminded of or at a deadline to, something like that, you would hit the little share icon in the top right of the note. You can slide over until you see reminders, or if it's not there, like in mine, I would hit more and scroll down a little bit, you'll see the reminders app. And now you can actually create a reminder for this note. So I'm gonna rename it, I'm gonna hit details, and then you see a similar option list from reminders, so I can add a date and time and those sorts of thing, I can make sure it's in the right list and then hit add. So now when I go back into my reminders app, I can see the note reminder I just created in my reminders app. And you can see the little Apple Notes logo to the right, letting you know it is integrated or it is attached to a note. If ever I wanted to get into that note, I can just quickly click that little icon and it'll bring me right into the note. So I definitely still wish Apple Notes had a built-in reminders feature, but honestly, this is still a pretty good workaround. Another thing I recommend is with that same share button, you can share a list with people. So if you have a grocery list that you want to share with your family or you're working on a class project or something like that, you can share it with anyone else basically that has an Apple device and that way the app will update in real time. So if someone in your family was out and was able to pick up milk and they check it off, it'll automatically check it off on your list as well. And probably my biggest tip to get the most out of Apple reminders and be as productive as possible is to use Siri to set these reminders as much as possible. It is just so easy. Instead of having to type it all out and go through and manually select all the options, 
you can just ask Siri to do it for you. Hey Siri, add milk to my grocery list. Hey Siri, remind me to call mom tomorrow at 2 p.m. And you can even use Siri for recurring events. Hey Siri, remind me every Monday at 2 p.m. to call mom. And of course, Apple Reminders is shared across all of your Apple devices. So anytime you add, edit, or check off a reminder, it'll update everywhere. So I'm honestly so happy that I gave Apple Reminders another try because I've been absolutely loving it and it is perfect for what I'm doing with it every day. There's so many cool built-in features that just work seamlessly with the Apple ecosystem that it's worth a try. So if you've been holding out on it because you remember, it really wasn't that good a few years ago. Let me tell you, it's awesome now and you should definitely check it out. If you did get value out of today's video, it would mean a lot if you could give it a thumbs up and if you could subscribe to the channel if you're not already so that you don't miss any future tips and tricks. So that's it. Have a great day. Bye.